this is Matt from modelitup.com. In this tutorial we'll be going over how to fly with the Photoshop CS6. You will need a camera, a tripod or a stable surface, and Adobe Photoshop CS6. Firstly set up your camera on a stable environment such as a tripod and then find the feature that allows you to enable multiple shots at once. This is usually called continuous shot and once you enable it, it'll allow you to take 10 shots when you use the release shutter key. So, depending on your camera, it might not be in this location, but this symbol is the indicator for the continuous shot function. Once you've got that down, you should be able to stand in the surface in the background and use the shutter release button. It'll take about 10 photos of you, come back to your camera, and you should be able to see what they look like. Just keep in mind of where you were standing in your first photos. Take a photo of your background, and then take a photo of yourself standing with one leg up, and then another photo with the other leg standing up. So it's key to make sure that you've got one photo of this leg up and then another photo of this leg up. We'll be using the photo that is the closest to the camera as the original photo that we'll be using for the face, the arms, the back, and this leg. We'll be eliminating the ground leg right here. In this photo, we'll be only using this part of the leg and we'll be eliminating the face, the body, and this round leg as well. Now, I used the polygonal lasso tool, so it took a little bit of time to go around the entire body. If you don't know how to use this, you just click, you press it one more time. If you want to get closer, you can get closer by pressing the plus symbol, or the minus symbol will go, uh, will go backwards. If you press backspace, it'll delete your last selection, so you can go along a body or a surface and select it quite easily. Now, because that's going to take a long time, I've already saved the selections, so I'm just going to go over to leg 2. This is the selection that I'm going to take. I'm going to double click this background, turn it into a layer. Then I'm going to go edit, copy, because it's only one layer. Then I'm going to go over to the background layer and press edit, paste special, paste in place. That'll paste it in place on where it was relative to this photo. So I'm going to go to Photoshop, or fly uh, shot 1. I'm going to go to select, load selection, I'm going to choose body, which is the leg that, or the body that I've already selected. Select along the body line, along the, uh, the buttocks, and then along the arms. I stopped along the midline so that this looks like it's floating instead of continuing with the leg. Now the best way is to pull your pant leg downward so you don't see this seam along here because if it's a brighter surface or brighter material, you want this to be as far down as possible so it simulates the fact that you're actually floating. In this example, I didn't really take the time to prepare my clothing, but in yours you can do so. So I'm going to go edit, copy, and then I'm going to go over to the background layer. Oh, before I do that, I have to change this background to a layer. If I do edit, copy on this, it wouldn't have copied it because it's a background layer. So I'm going to do it again, edit, copy, go over to the background layer, press edit, paste special, paste in a place, and now I can move up this layer 1, which is the other leg, to simulate that the, the leg is uh, moving, and uh, control T, which is uh, free transform, to rotate it a bit if I want, and I can really manipulate the leg however I want to make it look like I'm really floating. So if I want to now manipulate the shadow to make it exactly the same, I can go over to fly shot one, zoom out, grab over the ground, use my selection of marquee tool, grab around just this area, edit, copy, go over to the background, go edit, paste special, paste in place, and drag this layer over to the top. I'm going to rename it as uh, grass. Now because this background layer is slightly off, everything else is slightly off as well. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to take the move tool and just drag it up till it's exactly where it needs to be. So for this task we need to look for symmetry. Right here we can see that this object is exactly the same. If I use the arrow keys on the keyboard I can direct it depending on how many arrows I have to press until it goes to the exact point that I need it to be. I can use the, uh, the visibility tool to show me if it's actually closer or 
further away. Now, it looks like there is more light in this original photo, so I need to reduce it by either doing image auto color, which may work, unfortunately it didn't, so I'm going to do backspace, if I edit, step back, and I'm going to do image adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm going to turn down the saturation, which turns down the light and the brightness. So if I turn it down a light just a little bit, looks like this fine line should be able to be masked quite fairly. We might lose a little bit of the yellows, so if we want to turn it up just a smidge, that's fine. But uh, the easiest way is to take out the seam is to do a quick mask, click on the white portion, making sure that it's black, we click on here, turn our brush up for size, and we can use the, the bracket if we want, and uh, if we use the bracket we should be able to just dab, and making sure our opacity is around 50% or, or anything around there, we don't want 100% because it'll be a sharp edge sometimes, and if we dab it, it'll merge it so it'll, it won't really uh, blend so much. Now, I do notice some blurring, but uh, if you zoom out far enough, most people won't be even able to tell that stuff, so I'm just going to click on here, I'm just going to undo, click on to this part of the layer, if you click on this it'll paint it, if you click on this it'll be visibility, so I'm just going to click it and dab, and we can increase the brush size if we want to, so we're going to get out the bottom half of this shadow. And just to make it more realistic, we're going to press X to turn the foreground into white. Then we're just going to dab on here, just so it creates the buttocks, so that way it doesn't look like it's just floating completely in thin air. Once we've got that down, we may want to mi mimic the other half of the leg, so we're going to go to float 2. Then we're going to go over to this area, and we're just going to copy just this portion. So we're going to copy, click over to background, edit, paste special, paste into place, and we're just going to use the marquee tool to just go around. Just make sure that we've got this area entirely sh uh, shaded in, that way we don't have to worry about it if there is any problems. I'm going to use the quick mask tool. And then I'm going to invert this quick mask by pressing Control i So, now that we've got this, we can see that the feathering isn't too good. But if we hide it, we can tell that the shadow is pretty much there. All we really need is this portion of it. So we're just going to use the mask to uh, hide out the rest. So we've got all of that. Much better blended in the original as well just want to extend this leg outward so that they can see that this leg did exist. And we're going to turn down the opacity to about 20, turn down the hardness, that way it blends very very smoothly and we don't see such a hard edge which most people are more easily willing to dismiss. And uh, there we are got ourselves floating. Now if uh, you don't feel yourselves popping enough, just go to layer 2, layer 1, and uh, merge them. Go layer, merge layers. Then uh, go to image, adjustments, and uh, levels. Drag down just to pop the, uh, the blacks a little bit more. And uh, if your colors are too dark, you don't want it to, to mimic the light being ina inaccurate. So feel that's as, as good as we're going to get. But uh, you can see that it looks like we're flying. It doesn't look like it's uh, been manipulated in any way. You know, if you even zoom in, you can feel that some of the areas, they, they do look like their light sources are matching properly. Some areas you do need to touch up, like there are areas around here you could touch up to, to make it just 100%. Depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. But uh, there you are. You now know how to fly, and this tutorial can be applied to many different techniques, so I look forward to seeing your, your future attempts at this.